This is your first student here there. Welcome to the next episode of Differential Equations. In the last few episodes, we checked out how to use integrating factors as well as the separable differential equations technique to dissolve a complicated looking function. In this episode, we're going to take a look at some applications of differential equations that use the techniques we used in the previous lectures. So, if you want to join me in solving the next differential equation, let's go ahead and check it out. All right, folks, welcome to our next differential equation. Now, as you can tell, we're in a new lab. This is the Barry Science Lab studio, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars, fully renovated, uh, and that's where I'm making this new video from. So, here's the differential equation we're going to be solving, x squared plus 3y squared over 2xy. We're going to solve for y. So this is a homogeneous differential equation. So we're gonna start by simplifying this fraction. So let's zoom out and I'm gonna simplify this fraction, just bring it over here. We're gonna have x squared plus three y squared over two xy. Rewrite that as a sum. So we're gonna have x squared over two xy plus three y squared over 2xy. Now why am I doing this? Well, check out what happens. First of all, this x squared and this x cancels and this y squared and this y cancels. You're going to notice that I'm going to have a y over x appear almost out of nowhere. Let's see how that happens. So I'm going to have this is equal to x over 2y plus 3y over 2x. Now, where is that y over x I was talking about? Well, here is that one y over x. Here's one of our y over x's, but where's the other y over x? This is x over y, but if we can just write this to the negative one exponent, it becomes y over x. So let's see how we can do that. So I'm gonna zoom out more. Let's write that out. So we're gonna have on the, for the first term, we're going to have y over x to the negative first power times a half plus 3 over 2 to the y over x times y over x. So this whole thing is going to equal dy dx. Okay, so we've effectively rewritten our original fraction as this, as this sum. So why did we do that? Well, check out what happens now this y over x we can substitute it for what we can substitute it for a new variable so that we don't have to deal with fraction uh, fractional differentials or, or whatnot so we're going to substitute y over x for a new variable and i'm going to call this new variable z so i'm going to say z is equal to y over x so if i do that i can no longer use this differential right because I don't have dy dx anymore. Instead, I have a new variable that I have z. Okay, so let me write this out. This y over x is going to become half z to the negative 1 plus 3 over 2 z. Okay, so how does that help us? Well, first of all, we're going to rewrite this dy dx in terms of z. So since z is y over x, we have that y is xz. And so if I differentiate both sides here, what do I get? Differentiate both sides. And so I'm going to end up with dy dx is equal to, so now we all we have to do is the product rule, di uh, differentiate xz first in terms of x. So then you end up with z plus now differentiate in terms of x uh, differentiate z in terms of x so you have dz dx times x and so now I'm going to replace this left hand side dy dx with this sum so I'm going to have on the left hand side z plus dz dx times x is equal to this sum this sum over here so half z we're going to write it in white half z to the negative first power plus 3 over 2z. Okay, so now solving for dz dx, what do we get? I'm going to subtract z from both sides. 
So we're going to have on the left hand side, we have dz dx, dz dx times x is equal to, and on the right hand side, if I subtract z from both sides, I'm left with half z to the negative first power plus, what do we have? 3 over 2z minus z is going to leave me with half z. Okay, so seems like it's working out pretty nicely. And so now, if I start from this differential equation, what can I do? Let me grab a square from here. So if I start with this differential equation, how can I solve for z now? Well, this, as you can see, can be turned into a separable differential equation. I can bring all my x's to the right hand side, all my z's to the left hand side. So let's do that. I'm going to have dz dx, first let's write it nicely, is equal to 1 over 2z, which is the same as half z to the negative 1, plus z over 2. Okay. So now, if I just put some common denominators here, what, what will I get? I'll get z squared, right? So z squared plus 1 over 2z. Okay, so let's bring this over to the left-hand side so that we have 2z over z squared plus 1 is equal to, oh, and don't forget your dz dx, dz dx is equal to what? Well, 1 over x. And now we can do our magic. We can integrate both sides with respect to x. And so now check out what happens. This dx and dx cancel out. And so we're left with the integral of 2z over z squared plus 1 dz on the left hand side. So the integral of 2z over z squared plus 1 dz on the left hand side is equal to, well what is the integral of 1 over x dx? That's just going to be ln of the, the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. Don't forget your constant there. So now we're almost done. How can we solve this integral? You don't need any trigonometric substitutions here. Instead, you can just do u sub. So all you have to do is say u is equal to z squared plus 1. So du dx, sorry, du dz is equal to 2z. And so du is equal to 2z dz. And so now if I solve for dz, I get that dz is du over 2z. And so now I can make the appropriate substitution for dz right here. So I'm going to write the integral of 2z over, remember, instead of z squared plus 1, I'm going to write u. And instead of dz, I'm going to write du over 2z. And look at what cancellation we have here. This dz and this dz cancels out. And so we're left with the integral of 1 over u du, same thing as, same thing as the ln, the natural log of u, of the absolute value of u. And the plus c we can bring to the other side, that will just leave us with another plus c on the right hand side. So the ln of u is equal to the ln of the absolute value of x plus c. And now let's substitute in back for u. What substitution did we make initially for u? z squared plus 1. So I'm going to write the ln, natural log of the absolute value of z squared plus 1 is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. Okay, and so now how can I solve for z? Well, first thing you want to do is remember in the very beginning what we did is we made the substitution that z is equal to y over x. So we're going to re-substitute in y over x for z right here. So we're going to have the ln of, instead of z, I'm going to write y over x squared plus 1 is equal to the ln of the absolute value of x plus c. So, we're almost there. What are we going to do now? Well, now, since you have natural log on both sides, you can exploit that. Let me separate this a little bit so we can do the appropriate uh, algebra. So, since we have natural log on both sides, we're going to exponentiate them, right? So we're going to raise e to the power of these, e to the power of these powers. So what do we have on the left-hand side? We're going to be left with so e to the ln of something is that something. So we're going to have the absolute value 
of y over x squared plus 1 is equal to now this plus c can be a little uh, confusing so we're going to rewrite this plus c as just another exponential as e to that constant c and e to the c is just another constant c so we can just write c times whatever e to the ln of the absolute value of x is which is just the absolute value of x and so now I can I'm just going to remove these absolute values so we can make this cleaner so we're going to be left with what uh, let me switch to white we're going to be left with y squared over y squared over x squared plus 1 is equal to our constant times x and so multiplying through by x squared I can basically solve for y now y squared plus x squared is equal to cx cubed okay and so now just putting things together I'm left with my final answer which is y squared plus x squared minus 6x cubed is equal to 0 and this ladies and gentlemen is the final solution to our differential equation this uh, this equation right here this equation is the solution to this original differential equation thank you folks for watching this episode of differential equation live from Barry Science Lab or from YouTube and uh, we'll see you in the next episode the ambition plus MKO plus scaffolding equal learning we believe anyone can learn anything that's why our motto is memorization is a crime and that's why we partnered with Brilliant Brilliant transforms math and science into hands-on activities so that you too can understand everything from first grade math to E equals MC squared. Barry Science Lab and Brilliant is your MKO and will give you the scaffolding to expand your ZPD until you become the next Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein. Visit brilliant.org slash Barry Science Lab today. The first 50 of you to use that link will get a 20% discount on the brilliant annual subscription. Don't, Don't forget, forget that, that you too can, can become the next Einstein. Einstein. So, so let's, let's fall in love, love with math and science. And science.